The wisdom of God certainly vindicates the works of our Lord, of the Savior, because we know that what he did brings us to salvation. We, heard in the, we heard and we hear in the first reading that the Lord God is teaching us for our own good, teaching us for good. And we all know, you've all had experiences through my nieces and nephews. I've certainly had <coughs> experiences of their infancy when maybe the first word they learned was, it's not mama, is it? It's, it's dada, probably. And I know all the mothers get upset, but nevertheless, if that's the first word, hopefully mama, mama or mommy is second. But one of the words that constantly comes out of their mouth is no. Do you experience that? I'm sure you all have. <laughs> no, you're going to eat vegetables. No, and that's, of course, later and later on. But is it because they have heard it, maybe, from their parents, telling them, no, you can't do that. No, don't do that. Um, I, I, I have a cat. I've had cats, different ones. And certainly, a constant word they hear from me is no, especially Zelda. Zelda's my current cat. And, She's rather a large cat because she's a rag doll, but she also likes to eat. And she'll come into the kitchen when I'm there every time I'm there. And she'll meow until I give her something. <laughs> and I just look at her and I said, no, Zelda. So if she could speak, I'm sure she would be saying no to me when I try to pet her and she runs away. Nevertheless, no is often a word that comes out of our mouths or by our actions. And certainly, we say no to God. How do we do that? By not doing the good that he teaches us. Each and every time that we sin, it's a no to the Lord and a yes to temptation. Jesus calls us, the Lord calls us to follow him. God has given us the Ten Commandments. Some people call them suggestions. Some people just ignore them completely, or many of them or choose only the ones that they like. But the commandments certainly are for us to live a good life. And if we look through them microscopically, they may seem like prohibitions. But in fact, they are guides for us to love God. You know, St. Augustine said, love God and do what you will. Because if you love God, then you'll follow his commandments. If you love God and put God first, then you'll do what the commandments ask of us, require of us. Certainly, Jesus, knowing the people, knowing us, summed them up into two. Love God with your entire being, your heart, your mind, your soul, and love others as I have loved you. And how much do we know Jesus loves us? Well, he stretched out his arms on the cross to show us that he is for all of us. He opens his arms to all of us. He guides us to him on the cross where he is king, on that throne, which was a manner of persecution. And yet it is where he is in his glory because we know that the cross leads to something greater which all of us hope to arrive at someday. And we are called from this life to go into the next, to go through that door that all of us fear. And yet if we follow the commandments, if we love God and love one another as Jesus loves us, there is nothing to fear. There are many saints who have said, if you only knew what was on the other side of that door, if you only knew the joys of heaven, you would not fear death because it brings you to the glory of God, to the presence of God. During the beginning of Advent, our readings encourage us, tell us about the end things, to think about them. And yet we know that the season leads us, the season of Advent, especially in the final days, lead us to reflect on the incarnation and the nativity of our Lord, where he comes into our reality when he becomes one of us in the flesh to show us how much God loves us, how much he loves us and sacrifices that flesh. But even in the time of Jesus, the people didn't accept him. 
or accept his prophets. We hear Jesus talking about John the Baptist. John came neither eating nor drinking. He drank, well, he ate, as they say, locusts. But having been in Israel once, one of our guides said, you know, those locusts really weren't bugs. They were, in, they were berries. There's locust bushes in the Holy Land in Israel. And they're hard berries nevertheless, so they're kind of a chore to chew. But nevertheless, I like to think that's what John was talking about. Locusts and wild honey. And they said that he was possessed by a demon. He was crazy. And we all know that Jesus chose to eat and to drink with tax collectors and sinners because they were the ones who needed him the most. And they criticized him. But the wisdom of God has become vindicated because Jesus brings salvation to us. It is by being with us, I dare say, who are sinners, speaking for myself, of course, those few confessions that we now hear on Saturday afternoons in that loneliest place in the world, the confessional, where the sacrament with the most names has the fewest advocates, ad adherents. Be reconciled with God, be reconciled with yourself, be reconciled with the Lord and with the world because it is wisdom who teaches us. It's wisdom that teaches us to go to God, to go to the Lord. It is the love of God that teaches us those things. And so, as children may say no as often as they do, as much as they might, we know that our parents try to teach us the best. They try to teach us to be good people, to follow what is good, to follow the commandments, what is moral and what is just. And so does God, our Father, who has chosen us to be his children through adoption and baptism. And so we thank God for the gift of wisdom. We thank God for the gift of salvation. We thank God for the gift of knowing what is right and what is wrong. And as St. Augustine says, if we love God, we will do not just what we will, but what God wills and say yes instead of no.